you have a very popular YouTube channel, for those who do not know, on, on which you do fun things that combine chemistry, engineering. YouTuber has over 20 million subscribers and has worked at NASA and Apple. Mark Rober. Mark Rober. Mark Rober. This is a channel breakdown revealing the hidden secrets to why every Mark Rober video goes viral, pretty much since the beginning of his channel. I do know that in the last seven years or something like that, I don't think I have any videos, if you discount the live stream, with less than 10 million views or something. Your videos get 27 million views on average. Is this true? This is true. It's actually the most on all of YouTube. What is the secret? We will be covering everything from why he uses a specific type of music in his videos to how he creates four storylines in a single video. Is it really about cool video ideas and elaborate engineering? Or perhaps something deeper at play here? Mark has clearly beaten the YouTube algorithm and I just had to uncover his secrets. And I realized it all started with, well, a watermelon. <laughs> You want to know how I did it? This is not just any watermelon. This watermelon was the one that Mark used to create a 2 minute video that earned him 129 million views. Using a comfortable estimate of $3,000 in ad revenue per million views, this watermelon that probably cost him $5 earned him $387,000. Anyway, it seems like there's nothing really special about this video. So why did it blow up? Well, I'll come back to that in a minute. The first thing you need to know about Mark is that he uses a very specific type of music in his videos. In today's era of challenge videos, the default background music has become epic orchestra music, such as the one you're hearing in the background now. Behind me is an assassin! And if he stabs me with this rubber knife... Good. That's enough. You're good. That constant fast-paced epic music does not work for an educational and explainer style channel. Can you imagine if a Mark Rober video sounded like this? I cut my finger making lunch, so I placed an order for some band-aids a couple minutes ago, and now they're four seconds away. What a turn off. At the same time, the lo-fi music that is popular for educational videos just doesn't match the fun and energy of his videos. Instead, what he needs is something slower paced, but still maintaining the anticipation, curiosity, and excitement. And the secret to that is sneaky percussion music. And they run 24 hours a day in three shifts. One, how loud and disruptive are they? Because the last thing we want are annoying drones in case the backpack is being used just to smuggle the special mechanism inside. This sort of music is largely from using percussion instruments such as the marimba, vibraphone, and xylophone. Now let's take a few steps back, zoom out and explore how Mark Rober even decides which video ideas make the cut. How can I come up with more good ideas? Or like how do I be more creative? He does so by filtering his ideas through three criteria. I'd say just like getting folks, especially the young folks, like stoked about science and education and engineering by trying to make videos that are like catchy and interesting. For the idea to have mass appeal, it needs to check a few boxes. Firstly, the idea must be easy to understand. On YouTube, where viewers tend to drop off within the first 30 seconds, to ensure high viewer retention, Mark Rober ensures that each video idea is something he can explain in three sentences. If I can't explain it in like one to three sentences to you where you're like, dope, that's a cool mm -hmm. idea, it's not a, for me, it doesn't work for my channel. It must also be interesting to both adults and youth, subscribers and first-time viewers. It must be timeless so that the videos continue to accumulate the views way beyond its upload date. I'm building this back catalog that will like continue to be passive income for a really long time, right? Now remember I was telling you about this watermelon? The reason why skinning this watermelon gets him 129 million views is precisely because of the mass appeal of this idea. That being said, the standard of YouTube has increased far beyond that now. And that is why mass appeal alone doesn't work. Mark Rober's video ideas need to be educational as well so that the videos achieve a dual purpose of being both entertaining and having something to learn. And the last criteria is to leverage on science 
to stay true to the Mark Roper brand and to his unique competency. Kids, remember that science always works. That's mm, okay. Now these are the same three criteria that led to the hit TV series Mythbusters that became a top show on Discovery Channel. Gummy bear rocket in three, two, one. With average viewership surpassing 20 million eyeballs per season, a huge amount by TV standards. The New York Times described Mythbusters as the show that taught the whole generation how science works and why it matters. Doesn't that sound familiar to what this guy is doing on YouTube? Going back to the idea of a unique value proposition, a UVP is simply a fancy way of saying, I'm doing something my competitors can't. And in this case, being both ex-NASA and Apple, this guy is a literal rocket scientist that helped to build the Mars rover. I came here to work every day for nine years, seven of which were working on the last rover we sent to Mars named Curiosity. And if you can build anything from a balloon that sends an egg to space, three, two, one, you free! Oh. Oh. To a self-destructing glitter bomb halfway across the globe, we infiltrated and glitter bombed those three terrible scam call centers in India. His video ideas are as boundless as his imagination takes him. Tell me, which other YouTuber comes close to what Mark Rober is doing with science? If you are a creator and perhaps you are discouraged because you can't build a robot that kicks footballs, well, don't compare yourself to Mark Rober. Think of what unique talents you might already have. Okay, so now Mark Rober has chosen the video idea to work with, we can move on to the story. And every good YouTube video starts off with a good intro. A good intro hooks the viewer in and is the main decider between a high retention and a low retention video. In all of Mark Rober's videos, the intros consistently contain one vital element of a good intro, a promise of value or payoff. A promise of value is simply to show that this isn't a clickbait, the payoff is coming. In the arcade game video, within the first 40 seconds of the video, he already shows you the end product of his 5 arcade winning devices. It's not just for skee-ball, but for this game and this one, basically coming up with contraptions to absolutely dominate five of the most common arcade games. And you might be wondering, wouldn't that be a spoiler to the story? Well, not really, because he breezes through the final outcome so quickly in the intro that still leaves the viewer wanting to see the full version of things. In the largest toothpaste explosion video, he shows a mere grim he shows a mere glimpse of the final outcome. You get the promise of value, but still yearning to see the final payoff. Two, one. Oh! So after the intro comes the main story. What is Mark Rober's strategy to planning his story? To ensure that the videos are impactful and well, epic. He uses a technique I call scaling importance. Now let's use this video about drones as an example. Now the video starts off showing us a drone that can deliver food to our doorstep. That is a nearly silent drone system that can deliver a package from the sky right to my backyard in as little as two minutes. Great, that's relatable and interesting. But then he takes it a step further to show us how this technology can be used to deliver crucial medical supplies in Rwanda. If they can make it work there, why not use gliding drones to cover longer distances to deliver critical medical supplies for countries with lots of remote villages? And then he scales it up even further to talk about how in the future it will be used to transport humans in the medical emergencies. So you hop in or they put you in on the ground, then it reels you in so you can glide above roads and traffic straight to your destination. As the story scales up, the impact also gets larger. And the drone technology is not the only thing he scales up. He also tells us about Abdul. And what you should know about Abdul is he grew up in Rwanda, not far from where these drones are launching. And while he would eventually go on to do graduate work in robotics, attending both Stanford and Harvard, he got his start in engineering for much more simple means. And then he scales up to talk about how Rwanda as a country is wrongly misunderstood. I was blown away by Rwanda as a country. Literally everyone spends the day picking up trash and volunteering in their local community. They were one of the first countries to ban all single-use plastics. Now this scaling up technique Nick leaves the viewer engaged and constantly wow. To further engage the viewers to click on the video and watch through to the end, 
Mark Rober employs the use of multiple storylines in his videos. First, you need to understand that a storyline is simply a curiosity being answered. So if you can create multiple curiosities, you get multiple storylines. Simple. Taking the example of the series where he pranks the scammers, the most obvious layer is this. How will he prank the scammers? Second layer, will he successfully do it without getting caught? Third layer, how will the prank affect the scammers? The ethics are questionable, but generally people love seeing bad or embarrassing stuff happen to bad people. Then a few minutes later, we had our first bathroom customer who clearly doesn't wash her hands because now you just randomly see cockroaches start coming in frame. The fourth layer is this. Will these prank videos garner enough virality such that the local authorities will go after the scammers? Now, in the last video of the series, we get the payoff when there is indeed real change that happened because of what Mark Wilber did. Those three centers that had each been in operation for more than a decade, scamming the most vulnerable amongst us of their life savings, all got shut down with their top officials arrested. When there are so many layers of curiosity, there is a huge curiosity gap that leaves a desire in the viewers to click and watch. But because this style of prank videos have so many layers of motivation, Mark Rober has teamed up with Discovery Channel and Jimmy Kimmel to launch a show called Revenge Engineers. I've actually been working on a really fun series called The Revenge Engineers, which is coming to Discovery this fall. However, there is still a big problem. However, there is still a big problem that remains. When a channel is about science and engineering, there is a danger. If it gets too technical or too much about the science, it will cease to have its mass appeal. And the truth is, the normal viewer doesn't want to watch a 15-minute video about engineering. Mark Robert cleverly solves this problem by doing two things. Now firstly, he tries to lift the more technical stuff to the back of the video where the people that are watching are already bought in. Now in the drone video, he starts off the video talking about how this new drone technology by Zipline makes very quiet drones. That is very quiet. But he leaves to the 15 minute mark of the video to explain the technology behind how they do it. Zipline figured out how to take those spikes and flatten them all out. And in the piano video, he also leaves to the second half of the video to talk about the technology that allows this piano to talk and sing. Let's quickly discuss how we actually make chopsticks speak and sing. Secondly, he also weaves in the human stories to keep the videos more relatable and inspirational. In the Team Seas video, you're not just learning about a robot that cleans the seas. Mark Robot also shows you the person that designed and pioneered the project. That is Boyan Slack. He's the reason this robot exists, and his origin story for caring about trash in the ocean comes from something that happened to him more than a decade ago. In the drone video, you think you're learning about technology, but you are also learning about the country and the people that are better than the stereotypes. If you enjoyed this video, do subscribe and make me feel better about myself. Bye.